What's up guys, this is your guy Hi, and today I'm going to be doing a review of the Reptec RT340 pellet grill. Uh, so we're going to take a look at each of the components of this grill. Uh, I'm going to uh, let you guys know kind of why I chose this brand, this particular model uh, of pellet grill. Uh, and again, I'm also going to share with you at the end of the video some of the cooks that I've done. So I've done about 20 different cooks with different, different types of foods on this grill. Uh, they've all turned out great. Uh, we'll definitely be doing some additional videos on each individual recipe uh, as well. So again, we're going to take a look at the, the main components, which is the cooking area, the electronics of this device uh, or this grill, and then also kind of the hopper section, which is where you uh, hold the, the different types of pellets. So let's go ahead and get into it. So the RT340 is the smallest of the three main pellet grills that Rectech offers. This is actually meant to be a portable grill. Uh, which I think this weighs about 80 or 90 pounds. So this is something that you can fold up, the legs will fold up, and you can actually uh, put this in your car, your truck, and then have this uh, at a tailgate, have this at a, a camping trip. So it's very uh, uh, portable. Uh, you'll notice here that I can actually move this with just a single hand. I would recommend using two hands just to, to keep it stable. So you'll notice here that I can actually move this around quite easily. So it is a solid grill, yet e easily portable. So the RT340 has 340 square inches of cooking space on the grill here. So this is, uh, again, the small, one of the smaller three. Uh, this is more than enough, in my opinion, for a family of you know four to five people. Uh, they, you can cook essentially three full racks of ribs on the, on the 340 square inches. Uh, you can also cook up to 12 uh, burgers, uh, two turkeys, three butt, Boston butts or uh, shoulders on this. Uh, they also offer an optional shelf that you can add that will give you an additional 170 square inches. So for a total of about 510 square inches of cooking space. So again, more than enough for a single family. If you've got larger events, larger families, you're going to want to have you know, step up to the the 500 or the, the 700 model that will give you some more um, um, cooking space. Okay, so let's take a look at the cooking area. So initially you're going to notice that there is a heavy duty powder coated lid here. And this lid is actually insulated as well. So this is going to keep the heat in. Um, very solid, solid um, lid. Uh, and then pardon again, I've done a lot of cooks here. so. Um, you notice that, that I've got some kind of burn in um, on the actual uh, the grill here. So you've got your grill grates here. Again, you've got 340 square inches. You'll notice by my hand here, you can kind of get an idea of how many different, how much food you can actually put in here. So easily six to eight steaks, um, you know, eight to 12 burgers, uh, three medium size uh, sh pork shoulders, two large turkeys, three Three racks of rib would kind of be tight. You'd have to put the full rack here, the full rack here, and then with the shelf, you would have the third rack. So easily you can cook three um, racks of rib with that shelf. Okay, so let's talk about the, uh, the components of the grill. Of course, you have your grate here that you can take out. It's a solid stainless steel grate, so no rusting here. So it's gonna be tough. Typically, I would clean that off right before I, I do a cook. And you'll also have your drip pan here. I would recommend using some tin foil here to spread over your drip pan, and th this will uh, allow for an easier cleanup. Uh, initially, when I first did my first cook, I didn't do that, so I've got some burn in there, uh, so it's hard to kind of keep that clean. Uh, but if you do, if you use tin foil, uh, it's easier to clean that up. I'm going to remove this drip pan here, so you guys can see the the rest of the the actual grill. Here you've got the actual heat deflector. So this cover, covers up the fire pot so that the, the flames aren't directly on your food or the drip pan. Here is the actual, um, uh, the fire box. So down here is where the actual pellets will be caught on fire. So these are the little pellets. So with most pellet grills, the fire box is fed by an auger. So electronically, it will determine how fast to feed in the actual pellets based on the temperature that you select. So of course, if it reads the temperature too low, it's gonna increase that feed rate to, until it raises it to the temperature, desired temperature. 
uh, if you if it's too hot it will lower that feed rate to get the temperature back down to uh, the, the lower temperature so this takes out all the manual work so with traditional charcoal or wood burning grills uh, you have to manually uh, change the dampeners to increase the airflow or reduce the airflow to get the temperature you want. So with the pellet grills, uh, especially with the electronic ones, you can basically set it and forget it. So you set it at your temperature and it, it, will, it will do all the work for you. As far as maintenance goes, it is recommended that every five or six cooks, depending on how long you, those cooks are, um, some ash uh, can build up or some um, kind of residue can build up. Uh, and you would simply just need to remove your grates, um, your drip pan, and your heat uh, cover uh, in order to get in, uh, get a shot back and simply just kind of vacuum in uh, out that debris. It's basically just dust from, from the wood, wood pellets burning. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna look at is the hopper. So there's a little latch over here that holds the actual hopper door um, lid closed. And you'll notice here, this is where you actually put the wood pellets uh, this will hold about, I believe, about 10 to 12 pounds uh, of the pellets. There are different kinds of pellets. Um, I'm just using um, a blend that's made by Traeger. Uh, Rectech makes their own as well. Uh, but I just locally, I can get the actual Traeger or from Amazon, I can get a bag, uh, a 20 pound bag of, of pellets for about, you know, 20 bucks, 18 to 20 bucks. Um, the, it, the 20 pounds will last probably about six to eight cooks, depending on how long your cooks are. Of course, if you're doing um, kind of a, a, a pork shoulder or Boston butt that you're cooking for five or six hours, that will essentially use about a fifth of that. So about two, two to three pounds of the actual pellets. Uh, if you're just cooking some steaks for like an hour or 45 minutes, that's of course going to take less. So um, not, not very expensive, uh, the pellets. You can try different kinds. Uh, this is a blend of cherry maple uh, and I believe um, uh, cherry maple and mesquite. Uh, but again, you can try different kinds of pellets. There's also kind of pellets that will give you a charcoal flavor as well. So a lot of different ones that you can use. Okay, next thing we're gonna do is look at the actual electronics panel on this grill. Uh, this is Wi-Fi based, so you can essentially hook this up to your Wi-Fi home Wi-Fi network uh, and control this from a mobile app anywhere. Uh, so. Uh, let's say, for instance, if you were, you know, on your way home uh, from work or something like that or at the gym and you wanted to start the, the grill up. I wouldn't recommend it because if you're not here and you start the grill, uh, again, that could be a potential fire hazard. But you have the ability to, to start this from anywhere and control the temperature, uh, get alarms and uh, alerts and notifications based on the temperatures that you've set. There's probes here where you, that comes with the grill that you can, uh, you know, meat thermometers that you can stick in your food and measure the temperature for each um, uh, two different piece, you know, two different probes. And then uh, there's an actual hole here on the side of the actual grill where you can put those uh, probes through. Uh, you also have the ability to change the temperature, adjust the temperature directly from the grill. So you, you uh, versus the app, uh, it is Wi-Fi based. Uh, once you turn this grill on, it's actually going to show the current temperature what you're setting it at. So if you set it at, you, uh, one thing to note here is you can put it at a low extreme smoke or you, you can put at the lower temperature 200 and then you can also set the actual temperature. Uh, it will read the actual temperature here and then it will read your, the temperature of your probes. Uh, you'll instantly hear kind of the heat start kicking up and then the fan will start uh, spinning and the auger will start feeding the actual um, pellets into the actual grill. But I'm going to go ahead and turn it off. Uh, it is all electronic based. Uh, you can control that from your phone as well. Okay, so let's take a look at the back. Let's give you guys a peek at the back of the grill. Here's the back of the grill. Um, here are the vent holes where the smoke can actually come out. I do have a nice little dent here. I've got a story about that. So I'll tell you guys about that in just a moment. Okay guys, so this is the Rectech RT340. So there's a lot of brands out there for pellet grills. I did a lot of research. I looked at a lot of different brands and models. Uh, anything from Traeger, uh, Camp Chef, uh, Pit Boss. You can't really go wrong with any of those if you're getting a pellet grill. Uh, it's just a matter of preference. Uh, kind of like Ford, Chevy, Dodge. Uh, I'm a Ford guy myself. Uh, by the way, uh, but uh, the, the reason I chose this one is I've got a friend, Travis, 
that has a Rectech grill and he pointed out a few different things and, and they made sense. So this is a solid stainless steel construction inside and out. Uh, it also has a better warrant, standard warranty than some of the other brands. So with this model, you get a two year warranty um, from top to bottom. With some of the larger uh, models of Rectech, you get three to four year warranty. Uh, but based on this one being, I think $599 to start, uh, I wanted to, to kind of go with this one. Uh, also, this is a kind of a smaller um, a niche company that hasn't really been around that long, but uh, based on the reviews I've read in the communities that people have used these, uh, they come highly recommended. Uh, so they are actually, um, uh, I don't believe they're manufactured here in the States, just like any other grill, they're probably made in China or somewhere, the parts are shipped over here, uh, assembled in, in Georgia, so that's where their headquarters is. Uh, the customer service blew me away as well, so I've read uh, everything and, uh, about good things and positive things about their customer service. Uh, the story that I had about the actual um, the dent in the back. So when I received this, of course, it's got a nice little dent in the back. I was all bummed out about, about that. And so I immediately called or submitted a, a request online. And so the same day, I got a call back from a customer service agent there. And they were basically saying, you know, can you send us a picture? So I sent them a picture and they said, oh, I'm sorry. Let's, we're going to get a replacement out for you uh, and, and let us get back to you. But in the meantime, they also told me to go ahead and use the grill, even though I was going to get a replacement. So I was like, wow, you're going to let me go ahead and use it, and then I can just replace it and get a brand new one. So, of course, I didn't want to really deal with having to ship, ship it back and receive another one. So I asked them if I could get some sort of credit. So they immediately said yes. For that dent, they basically gave me $100 credit. So I got $100 credit to get some additional things. So I bought the shelf, and I also bought, um, what was the other thing? Uh, I bought the grill grate. So this actually... Um, will um, cook from up to a temperature of 500. So we know, you know that uh, if you want a good sear on a steak or a piece of meat, you've got to get in that 600, 700 degree uh, temperature. And so uh, in order to do that, they recommend using these grill grates. So I've got some grill grates that I'll show you here. I got these grill grates from Rectech. They sell these, but you can actually get these from grillgrates.com as well. So you can lay these flat to grill um, seafood or any other things like that, but you can also flip it around here to get your nice sear marks. Uh, so again, as I mentioned before, this grill will get up to the temperature setting, will get up to 500. It will probably go higher than that. Uh, but in order to get those uh, higher temperatures, like 650, 700 and above, you would have to use these grill grates to get those nice seal, sear marks. And you guys will see that in the video or in the uh, actual picture that I post at the end here where I've got some nice sear marks on uh, different steaks and different meat. Okay guys, so let's take a look at the app. Uh, the app allows you to select from different recipes based on the different types of food that you're cooking. So depending on if it's pork, uh, beef, chicken, seafood, you can get different recipes. So a lot of good uh, recipes that, that I've utilized. You also have the ability to manage the actual temperature or control the temperature of your grill. So here you can see you can raise and lower the temperature. Uh, it will also send you notifications when um, the grill has reached a certain temperature or if it's or if it's going higher than your set temperature or lower. Uh, you also have the ability to set uh, notifications based on the probes that you have in your food. So the, the two different probes that you can set. Uh, you can be reminded when your food reaches a certain temperature Uh, you also have the ability to raise the minimum feed rate. That is something I not ha have not um, had a chance to um, play with. You also have the ability to see uh, what's in the Rectech shop to buy. So a good app overall. Okay guys, so this is the Rectech RT340 pellet grill. Uh, again, the reason I like the pellet grills is it takes all the manual guesswork out of smoking and grilling. Um, so once you guys switch to this, you'll never go back to a regular charcoal or wood burning grill. Uh, it just it just allows you to set it and forget it, uh, regardless of whether you're smoking a Boston butt or a pork shoulder uh, or a brisket, you know, for eight to twelve hours, or you're just grilling some steaks, uh, you know, for forty five minutes, and you get those nice sear marks. If you guys found the video helpful, please like and share. Uh, if you want to see more content, please subscribe to the channel. I appreciate all the support. And I'll see you guys in the next video.